You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, uh, what are the risk factors or what are the symptoms associated with lung cancer? And with us, we have an expert on the topic, board-certified pulmonologist, Dr. Rutland. Dr. Rutland, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. All right, so what are, I mean, when do you know you have uh, lung cancer? I guess it's usually found on some sort of imaging, an x-ray. Yeah, so you, a lot of times with lung cancer, the, the biggest risk factor, as we know, is smoking, as we've discussed before. Smoking is the biggest risk factor for lung cancer. But how patients come to know that they have lung cancer is generally they'll present with symptoms. And those symptoms include cough, shortness of breath, hemoptysis, which is defined as coughing up blood. So what happens is you develop abnormal tissue in your lung. When you develop abnormal tissue in your lung, you get new blood vessels that are formed. Those blood vessels that are formed are not as strong as the typical blood vessels, so they have a tendency to bleed. Oh, interesting. And okay. when they bleed, you'll cough up blood, and that's somebody who may have a lung cancer. Now, the biggest other risk factor for lung cancer is age. The older you are, the more likely you are to have it. And then there's family members, right? There's genetics. If you have a family history of lung cancer, you're more likely to have lung cancer. So it's something that- Is it mostly the blood though? Like if you're coughing up blood or it could be shortness of breath it or can be, no it, symptoms at all? It can be shortness of breath, although shortness of breath is not as common as you would think because the lung cancer has to start somewhere. So it's small and then it grows. If you're really short of breath with your lung cancer, that means it's probably more advanced than you would have liked. And with the, with the coughing up blood, is that also more advanced? Yeah. Is that like it, end stage? It, so we don't classify it as end stage based on the coughing up of blood. The way that we quantify the stage or classify the stage is based on the cancer's presence in other organs or how big lymph nodes are or how big the cancer itself is within the lung. So that depends. Now, most people who are smokers, if you're over 50 and you're a smoker and you smoked for... 30 pack years, so that's a pack a day for 30 years. You need to undergo lung cancer screening and get a... Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. And how often should you get it and does insurance cover that? So insurance covers it now. So if you're over 50, 30 pack years, lung cancer screening, low dose chest CT. And again, most people may not know that because most people aren't going to physicians on a yearly basis. But generally yeah. speaking, primary care physicians will refer their patients to me for lung cancer screening. Or if they present to the hospital and they're within that age group and they have 30 pack years, I'm just gonna order a CT for screening to look for the presence of nodules or masses or lung cancer. Okay, so if somebody's 60 years old, they've been smoking for 30 years mm -hmm. and they're having some symptoms, they come in for a screening, but, but a lot of people say, I don't wanna know, right? Mm -hmm. But the screening, the whole purpose is to catch it early. So you can cut it out. So you could cut it out. Correct. And then the, they could survive. And they can survive, yeah. I mean, the earlier you present, the earlier the stage, lung cancer stage one to four, the earlier the stage, the better the survival. So how often do you get a screened? So you'd get screened once after 50. If you have nothing, you have nothing. We don't need to screen you again. Oh, you're um, done. You're basically, that's, those are our recommendations now. Do I get repeat CTs yeah, so on people? so what do you say? I do. If you're continuing to smoke, I will. Every five years, every two I'll, years? I'll get it probably every two. Every I'll find two an excuse years? to get a CT scan and get it every couple of years, especially if they that's have a covered really by strong insurance. history. Depends. Most of the time, we can come up with a reason to get it covered by insurance. Now, what about Medicare? And I know you, you probably don't take Medicare, Medicaid. We do. Medical. So is that covered, a screening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's One? actually, right. So, so yeah, Medicare does cover it. It does cover the screening. Now, you have to fit that age group. 30 pack years, 50 years old. Those are the people that qualify for screening. Okay, so the good news is, if you catch it, what? Stage I'm One. Five year survival, meaning the amount of people that are going to be alive in five years, 80%. Okay. Stage two, about 60%. And as you go on up in stage, the survival's less. So again, stage one is where you want to catch it. That's where you want to cut it out. And but there are stage well. three that live? There are stage three that can live. If we okay. catch it and we give them chemotherapy and radiation, they can live. And again, there's several different types of lung cancers, and the prognosis is different amongst them. But I'll tell you, my mother-in-law had lung cancer three years ago, really bad emphysema. We got a CT. She had stage one cancer, surgeon operated, cut it out, it's gone. Wow, that's good. Well, she was lucky to have, uh, I guess, a son-in-law. <laughs> As a that, pulmonologist. A pulmonologist yeah. to ease, you know, ease her uh, thing. Well, that's good. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate we'll it. We'll take a quick break. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back.